Alright, to save some time, I went and loaded in all the UIs. Basically, the same thing as before when we created our window, exactly the same. We just load in the form and the base classes by using the UIC module. Then, we create classes that derives from the form and the base class and call setupUI method to initialize our controllers. So we create the classes by deriving from base and form class and then we call setupUI. And I've done this for the node editor that inherits from node base and node form, light editor that takes light base and light form, etc. And finally, I've created them just to see if it works. So if we run this, we get all our editors popping up. So this is the node editor, this is the camera editor with motion blur and shake intensity. This is our light editor with light intensity, near range, far range and cast shadows. And this is our transform editor with position and three components. So what is our goal? Our goal is to have the node editor available for all our, n all our nodes. Doesn't matter which one you choose, it should be always visible. While the specialized editors such as the light editor camera editor and the transform editor are chosen dynamically depending on the type and placed below the node editor so if we would choose a light this is how we want it to look inside our window with the node editor at the top and light editor at the bottom so we need to make some adjustments to our window UI file so fire up the designer again Open the tutorial 05 UI file from the previous tutorial so we can modify it. We need layouts to hold our editors. We need two layouts. One for the node editor and the other one for the specialized editors such as the light node, camera node and the transform node. And I'm gonna wrap them up in a group box. So let's first create a group box at the bottom. Give it the name properties. Let's give it a minimum height of about 100 so we can actually drag and drop something in it or else it's going to be very hard. Minimum size of 100. And I said two layouts, so let's create two vertical layouts. The first one is for our node, and the second one is for our specialized editors. And call this layout nodes and the second one to layout spec. Finally click on the group box and then click on align vertically or layout vertically at the top. Save this out as tutorial 06. Alright, I've removed all the widgets we created to actually test our editors if they would spawn correctly. While we're at it we might also rename our window tutorial to 06 and also use our 06 tutorial 5 while loading the base and form classes. If we run this now we should get this. Now let's fix the attributes and properties of our nodes starting with the light node Remember, our light node had uh, four attributes, which were light intensity, near range, far range, and cast shadows. So let's create them. We have light intensity default to 1, near range to 40, far range to 80, and cast shadows to true. Let's also create the getters for them. Here we have the getters, calling light intensity, returns to light intensity, etc. We also need the setters. set light intensity to see the intensity and it sets the protected light intensity to intensity so basically we have setters and getters now let's do that for the camera node as well camera node has two attributes motion blur and shake intensity so motion blur is true by default and shake in intensity is set to 50 let's fix the getters and setters and finally 
we need to create the attributes for our transform class and it's gonna have XYZ coordinates and then also getters and setters okay so we have all our properties ready for our nodes now we need to actually start using QData widget mapper class on our node editor, light editor, camera editor, and transform editor. Let's create a QData widget mapper now. We need one per editor. Self data mapper is cute GUI QData widget mapper. I'm gonna do it the slack way and copy paste this all over. You might want to fix this with inheritance, but I'm gonna do it this way for now. We also need to fix one error and it's the scaling of the properties group box. I'm gonna put it to put it at 350, save, and now all that's left to do is or for now is to create our editors inside our window class. So create a node editor and also create the other editors such as light editor camera editor and transform editor let's rename these as well light editor camera editor and transform editor and our editors take a parent argument on the constructor we want the parent to be the window so they don't float around and we also want to dock them inside our layouts layout node and layout specs so self layout node add widget we add our node editor to it and then the light editor camera editor transform editor but we want we don't want to add them to the layout node we want to add them to layout specs And if we run this, we're going to get all the editors showing up at the same time without selecting anything. As you see, we got our node editor, light editor, camera editor, and transform editor. Let's hide them now, except the node editor. Self, light editor, I think it was set hidden or something. Let's check the documentation. Uh, Q widget set come on where are the setters why can't I search for them set mask set style what is there a method called hide maybe hopefully what widget well it does have a method called hide it wasn't just showing up in the documentation for some reason all right so oh it also has something called set visible all right set visible false and also do that on our camera editor and transform editor so now only our uh, node editor shows up, but this doesn't look correct. So let's go back to designer and use a vertical spacer at the bottom so it pushes everything upwards. We might as well want to change the minimum size to zero and use preferred, no we want to do expanding on horizontal, uh, on the horizontal and on the vertical save this out and let's try running this again now it looks correct perfect there are a few bugs we must fix go to the set data method and notice that we aren't checking the column while setting the data but our name lies in column 0 and type info lies in column 1 we really need to do this check if index column zero then we set the name also calling set data manually wouldn't update the views that is using this model 
they wouldn't notice that the data has changed. So we need to emit a signal which we get by inheriting QAbstract item model. The signal is called data changed. So write self data changed emit. It takes two parameters from and to. Since we only want to update a single item, we will pass the same index to both of them. Let's also comment out all the proxy model logic in our window. It's gonna make everything a lot easier when I'm explaining how the QData widget mapper class works. So comment the proxy model and all the logic that belongs to it. And also we need to set the model of our tree view to the original model. Now we're ready to actually implement the logic on our node editor. First of all, we need to set the model that the QData widget mapper will use, and that's done by calling set model. Since our data mapper is a protected member denoted by the underscore, we should provide our own method for setting the model. Like so, set model, model, store it, and set it set model with the model once the model is set you can call add mapping add mapping takes a specific column and the widget you want to map to the function looks like this the widget you want to map to and the column the widget will correspond to UI name or UI type Data will be the data will be retrieved from the column and displayed in the widget. And when you edit the data in the widget, it will be submitted back to the same model into the same column. Only the display role is used by QData widget mapper. If we inspect our data method of our model, we see that for column zero, we return the name. For column one, we return type info. Even though we don't display the type info by having our column count at 1, we can still map to that column. As I said, think of row and columns as a grid of data. You don't have to show it. No one is forcing you to do that. So let's add our mappings. Self, UI name, to column 0, since that's where our name lies, and UI type to column 1. Remember, those two are our widgets created in Qt Designer UI name, UI type. Let's call the set model method we just created. This should be called in our window class with our data model. So self node editor set model with our data model. And finally, we need to provide which item we want to edit. Normally, you would want to edit the current selection, but let's start simple and call to first. That will select the first item in our model. So self data mapper to first. Run the application now. Notice that our editor allows us to edit the name of the item. Pressing enter updates the name. You can also edit the item itself. And the editor would update itself. And remember, we may type in for readable, so we can't do anything with it. As you can see, the powerful model view framework that Qt provides for syncing is still there. We could share the single model across other views and it would still work.